Hello all, it's Dave from Talking Walls, joined with Ewan here and obviously Mr Tim Nash. Tim, thanks for uh, joining us Pleasure. today. Yeah. We're going to be talking to be about everything from the Kenny Hibbert book to Walls in general, some of your questions that you left us as well on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram as well. But Tim, we'll start off with the book, Season of My Life, Kenny Hibbert. How did this come about? Has it been a quite quick process or has it been two or three years in the making? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's been a, a while in the making. Uh, Kenny was first asked to do a book back, way back in uh, 1990 when he took oh. the uh, Warsaw uh, manager's job by a former colleague of mine at the Express and Star, Chris Smith, who was the Sadler's correspondent. And Kenny said no at the time because he, he was only 39 and felt he hadn't done enough to, <laughs> to warrant doing a book. And then uh, about four years ago, I think Chris approached him again um, but uh, and they, they were they started working on it, but due to um, a few issues, uh, serious illness on, on both uh, in the families of, of, of both actually, they were unable to, to push it on and get and get it over the line. So the day after I left the uh, Express and Star, um, nearly two years ago, I, I got a call from Chris, and the, the words were, "How do you fancy making yourself a few bob?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> do, doing what?" And they said, uh, "How do you fancy taking on Kenny's book?" I said. Wow, yeah, I'd, I'd just be so proud and privileged mm -hmm. to, to do it. And um, hooked up with, uh, with, with Kenny uh, at a former Wolves um, Players Golf Day. Uh, and um, he didn't know I'd taken it on at that point. So, But I'd, I'd known him sort of from speaking, him, yeah, speaking yeah. to him over the years. And, um, uh, and, and anyway, he was, he was delighted. And we've, uh, it's a bit un unconventional in that we haven't met up too often because of, uh, we're both working weekends. He's still a, a Premier League referee's assessor. So we've only met up, you know, four or five times uh, face to face to, to do stuff, um, you know, places like Stoke and West Brom, Leicester, you know, when he's been on the patch and I work on the patch. Um, so we've done it that way. It's been probably dozens, maybe hundreds of emails between us because he lives down in the Cotswolds and I'm, I'm yeah. up here. Um, we finally, finally got it done. Um, we said uh, we wanted to get it done for the end of the season, and uh, we got it, got it done for the end of May and. Uh, Got it all printed, so uh, it's it's available now. So really, really pleased with it. It looks really professional. Yep. It looks, looks um, we're delighted with how it looks and um, and the content as well. So I just hope it really sells well now. So you've done obviously a few promo events. I know you was at uh, Molyneux on Saturday. How are those been going? I think there's quite a few planned as well. Yeah, isn't yeah, that's that's right. We uh, we launched the book at Molyneux at WV One Bar on, on, on Saturday, and um, quite pleased with the with the response. Um, uh, we uh, invited um, uh, quite a few of his, his teammates there, yeah. sort of th throughout the uh, the era. So it was nice to for them to meet up and um, and uh, you know give a, a generous turnout to, to Kenny. Um, lots of fans were there passing through. A lot of fans in the in the club shop next door buying shirts, yeah. and uh, I think we got a bit of uh, footfall from yeah, from, from of course, that. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was just just really nice. Some people have. Uh, uh, posted some really kind comments on social media saying uh, uh, how, how, just how lovely it was to, to meet him. He's, he's very much a man of the people. He's mm -hmm. always uh, loved kind of engaging with the fans, which um, is really important, yeah. uh, of course, for promoting the book. Um, and we've, we kick off a series of, a series of events uh, tonight. We've got five events this week. We're at uh, Bar Sport in Cannock okay. uh, between 8pm um, and, and 10pm for a, a, a question and answer session. Um, uh, fans can come along and, uh, and buy the book, um, pose for pictures, get it, uh, get it signed, chat to Kenny, put questions to him, and uh, we hope uh, you know admissions free to all events, and we hope um, you know we pack the place out and uh, sell a few books, and, and people come along and enjoy themselves. He's he's, um, he's more than happy to talk about all the stuff that's in there. Um, uh, lots in there, stories about his career, players, managers, opinions on all of them. Um, uh, you know. He, He's a unique character in that, you know, we think he's the longest serving Wolves player. Oh, right. um, 16 years, you know, yeah. really long service. Yeah. Second in the all time appearance list with 574 appearances. He's the only player, only Wolves midfielder to have scored four goals in a game. Um, <laughs> he's one of only two players to have played in both League Cup winning uh, teams and the yeah. UEFA Cup final as well. Mm. Uh, so, you know, he, he did, did play in a really uh, successful um, uh, Wolves team, really yeah. fondly remembered. and. He's arguably, you know, along with Bully, you know, one of the um, most popular Wolves players who are still alive. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, um, yeah, we, we hope to have a, have a good turnout. We're, we're then at to the Cleveland Arms uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, again, 8pm to 10pm, free admission, Q&A. Um, the Chestnut uh, Tree just up the road yeah. here um, in Finchfield, which is uh, a bit of a quirky one, that, but he actually uh, managed the, the Chestnut Pub. 
um, their pub team, no, uh, yeah. uh, which is, you imagine that these days, a Premier <laughs> yeah, League yeah. star managing a pub team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He used to, when he first moved to Wolverhampton, he, uh, he made the chestnut his local, and so he got chatting, and he soon got roped in to, uh, to manage their Sunday league team, and um, did, it, did it for a couple of years, so we're hoping that on Thursday night, that's some of the old, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The old guard. players who yeah. played for and <laughs> are actually still around yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and can meet their old gaffer. Mm. So we'll put the full list of obviously the events in the description of the video as well. So um, obviously for me and you, unfortunately we're probably a bit too young yeah, to remember yeah, Kenny playing. Do you reckon the book is suitable for like all ages really or is it yeah, more sort I, of pushed towards? I, I mean, I'd definitely say um, that, that there's a, a natural appeal, you know, mm -hmm. obviously to, to yeah. those who, who remembered him and yeah. you know, saw him play. So. I'd say, I mean, I'm sort of mid forties, and I, I saw his last few years at Wolves. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, for, for so for anybody who of kind of mid forties and older, I think I think there'd be uh, real appeal because it, it you know a lot of nostalgia really take them back, and uh, they can relive memories and, and and indeed actually read a lot of stories that yeah. they wouldn't yeah. know you know behind the scenes yeah, that course, stuff, yeah. stuff that that went on. But I think for anybody a fan of any age who uh, who has an interest in Wolves. Um, I think, um, and who wants to know about um, just how good Wolves were and, and um, the, the team that they were, you know, regularly um, uh, playing and, and, and beating the top clubs in the country. Um, you know, Kenny played in um, uh, three uh, top, top six finishes, you know, in the, in, in, in the top crazy. flight. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, it's important for, for, for fans to, um, to know their history. And um, I, I, th I think, yeah, it would appeal to fans of any ages and uh, they'll, they'll really uh, enjoy, enjoy reading Perfect. it. Perfect. And what's the best way for people if they want to get their hands on a copy of yeah. Wolves? Yeah, oh, thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah. it's, um, it's uh, uh, just me and Kenny are selling them uh, just, just on, 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 online at the moment so they can contact me um, uh, uh, via uh, uh, Twitter, Facebook. Um, I'm at uh, Tim Nash underscore one. Um, uh, and uh, on, on, on Facebook, uh, my, my name as well. And then if uh, it will be, um, so people can, can, can buy on, online through us, right via PayPal, bank transfer, or check. Um, but it will be in the club shop uh, oh, shortly. Good, so so if they uh, agreed to stock it, so we're, we're delighted um, with that. And uh, also Waterstones in Wolverhampton. Oh, perfect. Um, in in, uh, in the next uh, next few weeks, they'll be stocking it as well. So uh, so there are different outlets for, for people to, to buy it. Uh, and no doubt in uh, pubs and, and whatever, certainly all, all through this week, yeah. we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll be arranging uh, more signings as well yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, to cope with the demand for people like London Wolves and other supporters clubs. Perfect. I hope it goes well. It seems like it's going well so far, so I hope it continues to do so as well. So uh, there's much. the book, and obviously all the details on that are, uh, will be in the video description. So then moving on, Tim, obviously journalist as sort of the, the job. How did how did you get into that sort of thing? Did you go? Did you have to go to uni for that, or did you just jump yeah, straight into it? Oh uh, no, I didn't. No, no, I was, I was a bit of a bit of a late starter, really. Um, so I was um, sort of about 20, 25. Always wanted to, to write for a living. Mm -hmm. um, always always wanted to be a journalist, and it, I don't know. I, I just didn't have a, a lot of confidence when I was younger. Didn't think I'd be able to do it, and uh, so. Uh, did something else first, and then um, just the, the writing book kept eating away at me. And um, at the time, uh, sort of early nineties, the, the fanzines started to become yeah. really, really mm. big business, and uh, that was my route into it. I started writing for. Um, I did uh, uh, like the. Um, I think join um, other notable people such as Paul Berry and, uh, yeah. and Pete Lansley. Went on to work for the Times. Obviously, Paul worked for the, the Birmingham Mail, uh, covering Wolves, and uh, worked for, for for the club for for many years. Yeah. Um, they both did the same. So yeah, I started writing uh, features and stuff for a load of ball and uh, with people like Steve Daly and Willie Carr, who I'd, I'd known sort of um, uh, many years before. And um, yeah, so gradually got into the start. Then managed to um, got to know sort of editors and stuff like that, and managed to um, start writing for, for local weekly mm -hmm. papers at the time. And then um, then trained and then managed to to get um, uh, get a full time job um, uh, sports editor on a, on a, a, a group of local. A weekly page. It sounds very grand, but yeah. I'm really. <laughs> and then from there, um, progressed to the the Shropshire Star and, and the Express and Star. Perfect. Um, spent eighteen years uh, uh, on the the evening papers, and then uh, uh, nearly ten years as a Wolves correspondent. And then um, went freelance almost two years ago now. Have you looked back, or is it just um, always looking forward? Yeah, I always yeah try to always try to look forward. Uh, very happy memories at the start, mm -hmm. and, and I think what it gives you, you know, working for um, Britain's um, you know, biggest provincial paper in the country, is it, it, it gives you a, 
a profile and it gives you a platform sure. and um, especially you know having, having what I call the, you know, the top job covering wolves uh, um, I was someone's told by one of my predecessors David Instone that it, it, it gives you um, gives you a platform and, and, and it's definitely done that you know I've been able to go onto national papers um, the chance to, to write the book as well um, but if I'd have stayed at the start there's no way I'd yeah, have the course, time yeah. to write the book so um, it, it's um, you know, it, it's it's a big, it was a big step to make because uh, you know when you when you're at one place for for so long mm-hmm. you know you wonder you know is the grass greener is it going to work out but um, as a lot of people have found out you know it, there is, there is life yeah after it and um, you know I'm pleased I made the, the step now and um, you know looking ahead to to other projects and stuff in the future. So guys, now we're going to pass it on to you guys. Uh, you did ask, ask us some questions on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, etc. So the first one to Tim is, is there going to be another State of Intent player hopefully coming to the club, do you think? Um, I, I would say possibly, yes. Um, I think uh, efforts have, have been made to, to bring in that, yeah. that, that sort of player. Um, uh, and uh, I know probably the one that... Um, Biggest one people are, are probably speculating on on that is uh, Marcus Rashford, mm. uh, and um, you know I, th- I think that the, there certainly has been talk behind the scenes of that. I know the club have, have, um, have officially um, said that's that's not happening, mm. and, and they've they've said that to, to me as well. Um, so whether that one's dead in the water, who, mm. who knows? But um, that that is the sort of one that really excites me. Yeah, but uh, from from a long time ago, you know, going back to before they got promoted, uh, before the end of last season, you know, I, I, I was told that you know don't don't uh, be surprised if if we'll spend possibly 30, 40 million on a mm. on, on a player. Now I know that that seems like really outlandish, doesn't it? But when you consider the sort of players that they are now not only being linked with but signing like mm. Rui, 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 um, Patricio of course yeah um, then that gives you the an idea of the sort of quality you know, caliber mm. of players that they're, they're now um, they're now after so um, well, if you look at the, the, the lad that yeah. Fulham have just signed I mean it just shows isn't it that yeah, the yeah. clubs are really trying to go for it so um, absolutely yeah. Yeah, Nuno's incredibly ambitious and I think he knows exactly you know what, what he wants to do mm. um, you know the, the pursuit of uh, Alexander Zinchenko at Man City as well which could be a potentially um, mm. club transfer record deal mm-hmm. um, I haven't heard anything of that for Seth some days now mm. but he was supposed to be making his um, his mind up but for Certainly, from the Wolves' end of things, if there was any hesitation about where he wants to go, he was um, worried about coming to, to Wolves. Then I think Nuno is quite prepared to, to move on. Mm-hmm. So you know, well, uh, if you don't want to come, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next one. Mm. Um, so uh, I, th- I think there's a real, real ambition there. Great, perfect. Yeah. I was going to ask, well, obviously about the Rashford thing as well. Uh, Key Humphreys on Facebook he says, "What's the most ludicrous rumor you've heard?" Um, just in general, ever, yeah, ever, ever. Well, ever. <laughs> um, oh, the, probably the the one that um, that, that that was that started the rumor of all rumors, the, the mother of rumors, I guess, which was uh, Dennis Bergkamp back mm. in um, two thousand four when, sorry, two thousand three when Wolves first got promoted to the Premier League, and um, there, there was just a whole host of names day after day, um, just just doing doing the rounds, but but that one got. Like, Grew legs and started walking, then started running. I think uh, you know you've seen in seen in Asda, and, uh, <laughs> as always. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's where Dennis Burke yeah. would be, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. Asda, Wolverhampton, Wolverhampton. Asda. yeah obviously. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that was that was probably the, um, the 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 biggest one, and yeah, the most outlandish one. See, I saw uh, what, a few weeks ago, obviously <laughs> when we've been linked with these players. I asked on, uh, I think it's Molly New Mixed the forum about that, and someone had put Rivaldo as well, and I thought. Surely not, but I searched it and Dave Jones apparently had approached him in like 03, 04 when he was out of contract, but obviously yeah, he just rubbished sort of it straight that, away. Yeah, yeah, that's the sort of thing that, that uh, Dave uh, would do. Dave, Dave was, was one for courting big names, yeah. you know, he, he was uh, not, not afraid of, you know, approaching people, well, as, as he yeah. was approved with by Sonny Paulins and Dennis yeah. Irwin, mm, you know, he, he would, uh, uh, they, didn't, they didn't scare him off at all, um, uh, so that, that, that wouldn't uh, have surprised me. I uh, can't remember whether we wrote it at the time. Um, we got some, did get some juicy stories under the yeah. under day, you know, at the time of, of big names. Um, Dino Baggio came for talks. I remember we got the picture wow, of him anyway. walking down um, with Molly New Alley in the background, yeah. you know, mm. walking in with his toilet bag for, for talks. But um, at that time, uh, they, they got him into Molyneux and I think he was quite impressed. But uh, Wolves didn't have a training ground at the time. Mm. It was just that 
potholed um, yeah. uh, sort of uh, driveway to the uh, porter cabins at the time. So <laughs> uh, I think when he um, got wind of that, um, he uh, decided not to come. Mm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, so moving on from the transfer side, um, in your personal opinion, what was your favourite part of last season? Um, it, it, I'm probably not, not best placed to, to, to answer that because I can only go on my own mm-hmm. sort of recollections. Yeah, of course, yeah. And, um, you know, I didn't see as many, you know, work in the Midlands patch now. You know, I've, I've probably covered Wolves um, maybe eight to ten times last mm. season, so... It's really on on uh, on what I've got. I mean, um, some of the some of the real kind of demolition jobs on on uh, you know championship teams, you know, like uh, Leeds and and, and Bolton. The Bolton game uh, really, really stick stick, stick, stick with me. Yeah. Um, the Villa game at, at home as well. That, that was a really sort of statement of intent mm-hmm, performance. Of course, yeah. Really, really strong performance. Um, I mean, for the fans, you know, ones like. Um, I'm sure you know uh, the Bristol City um, mm. would, would yeah. stick very high in the in, you know in the memory and, and winning promotion and and all the celebrations in in the, in the city uh, yeah you know and at, uh, at Molyneux for those uh, those final those final games um, uh, and of course Ruben Neves' goal against yeah. uh, against Derby in fact you could say any Ruben Neves' <laughs> goal any couldn't Nevis you goal, really? yeah um, which I, I, obviously I've covered virtually all of them I wasn't there for the Sheffield Wednesday away ones but uh, yeah. I, for most of his, his goals, uh, I think I think you know they were, and they were all special, weren't they? Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd probably be a bit guardian on that one, and but I'd, I'd probably keep coming back to Neves. Yeah. Yeah. Goal against I, I think you could have like because last season was full of so many moments. You could ask like yeah. twenty different Wolves fans. There's a chance that you had ten different, different moments. Yeah, like, I mean, just such a special season. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, I've been I've been supporting and reporting on Wolves mm-hmm. for the best part of forty years, and and I, you know, I can't remember really. Um, uh, such a special season, you know, as that really. I mean, when I first started watching Wolves regularly, Wolves were, you know, on the cusp of, um, of you know, back in the national spotlight. You know, they mm. signed the, um, uh, you know, Liverpool captain Evelyn Hughes. They'd, they'd uh, signed Andy Gray, British record signing, built a new stand. You know, so it was really exciting times. Won the League Cup, finished sixth in the in, in the top flight. So that was really that was really exciting. But I sense that. Um, the same sort of level of excitement is is, is back again, mm. and uh, you know Wolves are being linked with uh, with big names again and um, and signing them as well. So uh, I think it's a, it's a really exciting time to be um, to be involved with Wolves and, and, and as a supporter as well. So we've got Adam Parton on Twitter as well. He's talking about the squad. He says, out of these promoted players that are in the current squad, which three do you expect to flourish in the Premier League? Um, I, I mean, I, I think um, yeah. We've got to look at Neves to, to start with. Mm-hmm. I, I think Ruben Neves will, will flourish in, in the Premier League, and um, it doesn't surprise me to see him linked with uh, with Liverpool and Man, and Man United. Mm. Uh, but I do think you know he, he's uh, he's right behind this Wolves project. He, he knows that they're going to invest, so he mm-hmm. knows that they can give him the, the platform that he deserves at least at least for a season. Uh, and uh, you know, signed a, a you know five year uh, contract. Mm-hmm. Um, I was surprised to see. Ivan Cavaliero and Helder Costa linked with moves away, and uh, because I, I I thought Cavaliero last season was superb. Top I mean, I know mm-hmm. a lot of people say that Conor Cody was the most improved player, but for me, if you look comparing to the season before, Cavaliero come on mm. leaps and bounds and, and was was brilliant. You know, right across that uh, front line. Um, I think Costa was affected by his injury last season, but. Uh, I am very excited about seeing him now. He looks mm-hmm. a, a new player already. Yeah. I haven't seen pictures of him on tour. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's yeah. crazy. Um, so uh, if if he's anything like he was in his first season, you know, I think uh, he's got such amazing feet, hasn't mm-hmm. he? Um, you know, I, th- I think uh, we, c- we could be in for a treat watch, watching him, uh, a real crowd pleaser. So uh, I sort of naturally look to forward players as well because they're just so, yeah. so excited. Yeah, yeah. Nevers is a defensive midfield, uh, defensive midfield players, but I'm really. Exciting to yeah certainly look at uh, the three Portuguese lads um, or three of them um, Neves, uh, Cavaleiro, Costa. Um, I mean Willie Bolly is probably the best Wolves defender mm. I've ever seen, and I think he'll be he'll he'll, he'll have a lot more challenges in the uh, mm. in, in in the Premier League, but I think he'll he'll he'll, he'll relish those and he'll walk to yeah. the task. So next up, um, Tom Parker says, do you think the younger players should be played more instead of signing a lot of sort of new players and foreign players? Yeah, it's the age-old question, isn't it? And, mm. and I think um, what fans probably uh, have, to, have to look at is while whilst you, I think every fan would would want to see 
uh, a team full of homegrown mm. players. <laughs> um, you know, at what cost is that now? Do you want a team that's going to be challenging? Uh, you know, in the top reaches of the Premier League. Mm. Um, if so, you know, can you do that with homegrown players now? The answer to that is clearly no, because if you put a team of homegrown mm. players in, you know, they, 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 they wouldn't um, be successful. And Nuno clearly recognises that because he signed so many foreign players. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. Um, now, uh, I think it gets more, more and more difficult. The higher Wolves go, the chances of, a, of, a, of a, an academy graduate breaking through to the first team um, is going to be far more difficult mm-hmm. now. Than it than it would be if they were um, if they're in the championship, mm. um, you know, because it's a, a higher class of opponent, uh, it's a much more difficult league. So I think if supporters want Wolves to to establish themselves again in the, in the Premier League um, and and not go down and, and, and gradually become a force, then I think they're going to have to accept that uh, that you know they're, they're going to be high quality, uh, high investment signings to facilitate that. But but clearly as well if. If the academy graduates are good enough, um, they they will rise. You know, they, they, they'll be given their chance. Mm. Um, but well, there's, there's huge yeah. investment, you know, in, in, in the academy anyway. Definitely. Well, lead on from that question about um, about the young players. So Morgan Gibbs White, would you see him yeah. sort of fitting into that centre midfield role if um, Says potentially comes back into a centre back position? Yeah, I or? mean, po- quite possibly. I mean, I I really like Morgan Gibbs White. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, we haven't seen him much from from the start yet at mm. all, but but. Whenever he's come on, I think uh, he's he's been a breath of mm. fresh air. He looks a, he looks like a man already. Um, you know, in terms of his his, his physique, he won't be intimidated from from <laughs> all that For I hear sure. about him. Uh, he's got a really good attitude, um, and um, I think it, it's such a it's so exciting with him because um, I don't think we know what his best position is yet. You mm. know, I've I've seen him as a as an attacking midfielder. Um, I've seen him come on and, and play in wide areas. Um, I've seen him play the right wing back role mm. um, and I've also seen him play as a, a more defensive midfielder alongside um, uh, Ruben Neves so um, you know he's got bags of time on his side 100% uh, yeah and um, you know let, let's just watch him develop and not, not sort of pigeonhole him into one position and yeah. uh, uh, I think I, I'd like to see him given a chance in the Premier League but if that's not going to come which I, I, I suspect if not if Wolves sign Make a big sign in as a in central midfield, then the chances are um, his opportunities might be limited. So he might have to go out on loan yeah. to, to a championship club, and uh, it's really important that he stops getting regular football. I think. Yeah. Um, so whether that be a Wolves <clears throat> or, or elsewhere, let's let's just see him get that. I think if he if he does play that central midfield role and plays half decent, I think England call mm. up. I'm not, that's yeah, not well, even I mean, being like he's gone through the age groups, hasn't he? That's what I mean. So, yeah. He has. Well, look at uh, yeah, yeah Ruben uh, Loftus Cheek. Yeah, you know, he, uh, he's had a he's a similar sort of player, I think, mm-hmm. and, and, and he's had a similar pathway. Um, you know, went on loan to uh, to Crystal Palace mm-hmm. and uh, you know got got regular football there, and he's proved that he can break through and get in a World Cup squad. So um, you know, why not uh, Morgan Gibbs? Why talk about England? Do you think? It's a it's an interesting question, Connor Cody. Do you think he could break into the England squad if, with decent performances, or do you think there's too many better centre well, halves in the England squad? I've I've seen um, Gareth uh, Gareth Southgate yeah. quoted on that, and um, he wouldn't uh, look at, at Connor Cody um, as a Championship player because mm. he thinks the gulf between the Championship and Premier League is is too high, and, mm. and that you need to be playing week in week yeah. out in, in in the Premier League to be assessed even um, to be good enough for, for England so I think any decision on, on Connor Cody being at that level has to be taken um, you know if and when he's playing regularly yeah. um, this, this season uh, now I'd like to think he will get that chance because of how well he played last season you know he was superb in that in that sweeper role um, you know I think technically he, he could still get better um, you know he's he, but he's He's proved that his reading of the, of the game, uh, his range of passing as well, really just just amazed me mm-hmm. the way it's come on yeah. last season from when he played in central midfield and, and indeed right back as well. He's clearly got the legs as, as we've seen when he was a, a full back and, and at times last season. So, um, you know, let, let's see him bet in, in, in the Premier League first and uh, see, if he's, uh, see if he's good enough. Obviously, Cody, you've got Harry Maguire, John Stones, both sort of ball playing almost defenders, similar to Cody. So, do you think. That, that could well, be a potential thing. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think um, that might count against him. You know, England. Um, what what goes in his favour is that Gareth Southgate uh, clearly um, uh, favours three at the back, and uh, you know, that's what what brought us success 
at the at the World Cup. Um, what might go against him is that England have got such uh, two good, um, exceptional ball playing centre halves in, in Harry Maguire um, and uh, John Stones, of course. And um, I think for, for Connor, you know, that, that shows a level that he's got to aspire to. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, before the World Cup, um, you know, people perhaps maybe hadn't even seen Harry Maguire play. Um, and, you know, he's only got, uh, you know, barely a handful of England caps. But now, um, I think you could see him being a mainstay uh, mm-hmm. for, for England for, for the next yeah. 10 years. You know, he's, he's young enough to do it. Uh, he's certainly, certainly good enough. Um, you know, John Stones as well. But, uh, I mean, and there's still improvement to come from those two, I think, certainly defensively in, yeah, yeah. in Stones' case. But, um, but yeah, I think that, that, that's, that's the benchmark that uh, Conor Cody's got to look to hit. Perfect. Uh, we've got Adam on Twitter. He says, prediction on where Wolves will finish this season? Yeah, a few people asked me that. I think, um, I honestly think that, uh, I mean, that's, you know, I said last season that Wolves could, uh, the team they had last season could, could have finished um, about, uh, you know, certainly bottom half to, to mid table, so sort of top, you know, edging towards the top ten. So I, I think I think about halfway, you know, I really mm. do. Uh, I, I think um, with the signings that they're looking to make, that sort of quality, the signings they have made already, and and indeed the, you know, it's, it's quite a young team, the quality that that's already there. I think that, you know, what Wolves did this time last summer was already. By Premier League uh, mm-hmm. ready players, Planning for the future. You know, yeah. um, uh, you know ne- Neves, Jota, Bolly. Um, you know, when they people like that then came in, uh, they were um, you know, Cavaliero as well, Costa. You know, these are all players that have got the ability to play in the Premier League, and that, let's let's see them do that. I do think we'll see um, you know the num- you know more more signings to to add to to that. You know, he's clearly after a left wing back. Yeah, uh, he needs cover at right wing back. Um, uh, I'm sure there'll be. Uh, I, I thought there'll be a midfielder coming in. You know, if, if, uh, if the, what we think is true with, with Sice dropping back to to play yeah. as one of three mm. centre halves. So, um, so yeah, I think I think uh, Wolves fans can hopefully look, look forward to. Do a, you a think finish. that? We, did, we, did you expect Wolves to have made more signings by now? Or do you think with the World Cup it might have been it's after been the tournament? Yeah, it's yeah. always it's always it's always difficult. I, I mean, um, you know. I, I'd have thought in an ideal world, managers would would want their business done, done as early, it is. Mm. Yeah. but that's not always possible. And with the sort of you know caliber of players that Wolves are after now, um, there are going to be you know the strong rival interests from from uh, you know uh, other Premier League clubs. So uh, and, and abroad, of course, as well. What what does help Wolves? I, I, I think um, you know in any good business, you know, use your contacts and uh, mm. what contacts have in George Mendes. You know, yeah. the, 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 the unbelievable. You know. Um, you know, there were other championship clubs uh, were um, tried to to get Wolves, uh, uh, the, F, the EFL to to look at Wolves yeah. and, and the involvement. But you know, Wolves haven't broken any rules. They've just uh, used their contacts, and and I know for a fact that uh, other other championship clubs would love to have that yeah. sort, sort of impact. And, yeah, exactly. And and um, you know uh, that others tried, I think tried tried it last season. I think, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, without success, and and you've got to you've got to use that and, and, and tap into that, and uh, um, you know there are other super agents attached to to Premier League mm-hmm. clubs. I know Man United have, have, have got one, so um, you've just got to use whatever you can to uh, to work in your favour. Yeah, interesting. Um, so the next one is, what's the favourite Wolves game um, you've ever reported on in your whole career? <laughs> um, I probably have to to go back to the the, the first um, the, the playoff final in two thousand three. Yeah. Uh, there was just so much. Um, there had been so much tension in in, in the build up beforehand, and, and uh, you know with the anguish of, of the let down of the previous All those years, season. Yeah. yeah. So nineteen years, you know, outside the top flight, and it's just huge joy and, and relief from from uh, the whole you know city really, yeah, and, and beyond and. Uh, when they finally did it at Cardiff and Sir Jack with a thumbs up, it was it was pretty oh, surreal. Special, it really, yeah. it was. Uh, so uh, I felt I felt very proud and privileged to, to cover that, uh, and that was in my first season actually covering Wolves wow. for, the, for the Express and Star. So it was uh, all downhill after that, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, I think I did three promotions and three relegations, mm. but uh, that was probably the, the 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 standout moment. You know, I mean, the, I, I, I'd um, sort of. Uh, the, the sad moments I think was relegation from the championship you know yeah. with uh, Roger Johnson unable yeah. to give his shirt away yeah. and Jamie O'Hara they, it was horrible really that the way the, the discord between the players mm. and fans that the relationship between the, um, the the squad and the fan base just broke down really at that, that point and that was really well it's sad to see yeah. Um, yeah. you 
you know, for, from someone who cares about the club, but also it was difficult to be a reporter because you know, you know, you know, you're going to generate negative headlines because yeah. you, you've got to tell it as it is, and uh, you know, it, it it can compromise relationships that you've got, you know, with, with people at the club. Um, you know, that there's a there's a frostiness. You know, uh, yeah. the, the relationships always up and down anyway <laughs> between you know managers and players and, and reporter of a you know uh, of a club, and um, that certainly you know. Test, tested it at that point, so that, that was a that was a set. But there's plenty of happy times about you know the League One uh, title win, with the, you, know, um, you know people like Dicko, Sacco, yeah, um, and uh, Benica Fo. Really yeah, brought that look back, didn't it? To <coughs> yeah, the fans that, that and the was connection a, a really, between really special mm, yeah. season as well. It will be in, in, in League One, but uh, um, you know Kenny Jacket was was very good to deal with it. You know that uh, that time, so given of his time, yeah. you know he, he always. Uh, uh, he, he was, yeah, smashing to deal to deal with. I, I always thought that he would bring uh, take Wolves back to the mm. Premier League, but it was never given the, the he chance. Came closer, didn't he? That he first did, season he back did, to the Premier League, yeah, yeah, they got huge momentum, didn't they? From I think if, it, if they sneaked it, they might have. It sneaked in the playoffs. Yeah, it was just momentum, wasn't it? Definitely, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would have been interesting to see. But I, I know you touched on it then. But is it is it difficult when when you've got the downs to report on Wolves or like when Wolves are? Yeah, yeah, it becomes more difficult. You, it can be a lonely job at times. Mm. You know. Um, I mean, over the years, you learn that uh, if you get a great story one day, that um, oh, hang on a second, people might not people yeah. might not talk to you for, yeah. for two weeks or whatever. So there's there's always a, it's always a uh, you always walk a fine line mm. really um, between what you hear, what you know is true, what 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 you feel you can write and what you feel mm. you can't, how far you go, um, uh, because uh, you know I found Wolves to to be quite a sensitive club to to deal with. Mm. You know they know. Um, that they they uh, devour every 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 word as as the as the fan base does, uh, and so you you, you have to uh, tread a fine line at times and, and find care, and try uh, tread carefully. But uh, hopefully, you know, more times than not, we uh, got the got the balance right. But uh, it's also tremendously exciting as well. You know, yeah. fans want to read about uh, um, uh, players coming in, especially signings. Yeah. And uh, when you when you get you know an exclusive or a signing story. It's um, it, it's it's a real thrill. It's a real adrenaline rush to be able to share it with with, with fans, and uh, for me, that that never goes away. Mm. Well, what what about this sort of opposite? Obviously, I'm sure like there's some journalists and some papers out there that just make anything up just to get a story. Obviously, you've got your source. If if it doesn't quite go to plan, is that hard for you to take? If say you put something out on social media and it doesn't quite come to fruition, or <laughs> it, 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 it is, yeah. I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to give uh, I, I give people the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, there's very few people, uh, like journalists out there, who will deliberately uh, make something up. Yeah. I, I, I always think that the, the, the problem with it is, is, is people's perception. Now, you, you, as, as journalists, you know, um, everyone's got their own agenda now, whether your source is, is uh, people at the club or yeah. around the club or, or knowing people at the club or agents or, you know, I don't know players, family, or, or friends, or anybody like that. You know, they've all, they all, you all hear, you, you all hear versions of the truth, mm-hmm. and and um, you can only report. Uh, you have to decide what's right. You know, you 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 hear things that are, you hear opposites quite 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 often. You know, um, like for example, this summer I've heard that Cavaliero and Costa were made available, but I've also been told by a very good source, well, no, Nuno wants to keep yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you think, hard. well, with that, what what do you do with that? Mm. Because you're hearing opposites from opposite points of view from from good sources. Um, so you you really have to kind of make it make a judgment. Mm. Uh, and at any one time, I remember you know a former colleague of mine now works as a, a communications at a, at a at a club and. Um, they said as reporters that uh, we only get to know a shard of like of what goes mm. on inside a club, and I always, yeah. I always thought that when I covered the walls, I probably only ever knew about ten or fifteen percent about what was going on mm. in terms of the, the juicy sort of stories. Um, you know, occasionally you, you you do get lucky and you get something early, and um, yeah. and, and the, the club might come on. To, how, how did you find that out? You know. Mm. Um, quite often, certainly in Jez Mox's time, every few months I'd get a call saying, "Who's the Molyneux mole?" You know, how do you mm. find out this? And I'd, so I can't tell him that. Mm. Uh, I remember Mick McCarthy ordering me to get down the training ground as soon as possible, and him eyeballing me, saying, "Who, who told you this? You know, who told you this? Who told you no. that?" I can't say, him. and he was, he was quite intimidating. But yeah, it's think, hard. Well, what would he do? And, uh, <laughs> Big I can't, I can't yeah, tell him. Yeah. And in the end, he just had to say, "Well, if I ever find out if, if it was one of my staff, they'll be down the road." And uh, I just thought to myself, 
don't worry, you won't find out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's secret yeah. safe. That's hard because um, I bet you a lot of people, as soon as like a big like Jez Moxie or Mick McCarthy approach them, they're going to go, oh, it was this person. It was yeah, this person. Of you, you, have to, you have to look yeah. after people. In, of fact, course, yeah. in, in fact, sometimes you have to. Um, you have to maybe wait a few days and, and even um, dilute it, or, or, or not even something's you know just too close to mm. to to certain people that you have to protect them. Otherwise, it, it you know people would put two and two together and, and quickly find out who it was. So you you know you have to look after uh, your sources as well. But mm. but yeah, coming back to your original point, probably the biggest one for for me um, where people think oh he's got it, he's got it wrong was um, Robbie Keane in January. Mm. Oh, now yeah. I know that you know Wolves have been talking to Robbie Keane. Mm. Um, but Robbie Keane, um, he can't say that, and Matt Murray can't say oh, that. Of course, yeah, uh, Matt Murray he was under contract, yeah, yeah. and they, he was their marquee player. But there was, I know there was, there was dialogue, and uh, um, he, he, he want, uh, I believe he wanted to come back. Um, Nuno wanted him, um, but uh, he couldn't get out of his contract mm. uh, at the really time. Really interesting that. Mm. Um, but they, you know, as a lone player to, to, to boost, uh, you know, with his experience to get Wolves over the line. Mm. I think Nuno thought that was a good that's, sign. That's, yeah. what he, that's, what he, that's what he wanted. All round, I think merchandise, um, the push of him, everything. Yeah, yeah. It would have been huge, and to bring him on for twenty minutes, half yeah, an hour, yeah, you know, right. with his quality, um, you know, I'm sure he, he could have enhanced things. But, uh, but yeah, so so um, I probably think when 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 people uh, mentioned that, uh, oh well, he's the one who, you know, said that Robbie Keane was, was signing. Well. You know, I said that Wolves were hoping to sign him, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and that is true, and mm-hmm. I stand, I stand by it. And people who who really do know will know that, um, you know, I got that one right because he, <laughs> Wolves, mm. Wolves want, did yeah. want him, but they couldn't. I think yeah. it's just when fans they they hear something they, they no. really want it to happen, yeah, and if it doesn't yeah. happen, they'll try and scrutinise everything. Absolutely, like so and, and yeah, yeah, it's we, just we, one of those. I, I, you know, I do get it. You know, mm. and we're, we're this, the scapegoat as well sometimes. Mm. You know, it's like. Um, uh, don't shoot the messenger, but often yeah. we're, we're the ones because we've we've announced we've announced their interest. Well, we then get it in the neck if something does, doesn't happen. Yeah. But that is it goes with the territory. They always hold a grudge, don't they? So say yeah. you well, might. I don't know about hold it. I think that's a bit strong. I mean, I mean, I I, I feel as if I, I've had a, a really um, fairly smooth ride on, mm. on social media. You know, I get very very little abuse. Um, you know, I've now got my second imposter. It would appear. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, I, I, that that just baffles me. Yeah. Like why people would want, would want to do that? I, I don't understand that. But uh, still, people that believe it as well, but yeah. they don't just click know, on yeah. and they look at yeah, yeah. it straight away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that's that's the scary thing. That people, mm. uh, yeah, believe it, but uh, but yes, yeah, so you have to keep an eye on, on things like that. But uh, but no, I've I've, I've had a um, I, it could have been far far worse. Mm. Yeah, of course. What, what I try to do is uh, I never never try to say anything negative to anybody because it can just it just lead, it, it just leads to, to mm. hassle and. Uh, um, just uh, what, what, why do that, you know? And but, but if if I feel as if it's a point worth arguing, I'll, I'll try to make my point, you know, as uh, yeah. as um, sort of passively as, as as possible. And and you hope that people see, it, you know, yeah, course, just, yeah. just understand it. They don't have to agree with it, but if they understand it, then uh, and respect it, and you know, respect me and don't use foul language and things, mm. then then uh, I'm, I'm cool with that. Perfect. Well, Tim, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Talking Walls oh, today. Good. Really, uh, yeah, really thank good. You. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank Cheers. you. Uh, obviously, you can uh, find all Tim's links in the description down below. Uh, t- if you want to grab a copy of the book, obviously, you can contact Tim as well. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining in. Pleasure. And uh, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. And we'll see you all very, very soon.